Uh, my role as Chancellor of the Board of Regents in Ohio, as I mentioned, does have uh, some responsibilities uh, with respect to all of our institutions, financial aid and accreditation, et cetera. Um, but, uh, but I have a particular uh, uh, responsibility for our public universities um, in Ohio. Um, and uh, uh, and, I, and we, I take that responsibility uh, very, very seriously. I mean, these are, uh, these are institutions uh, in our state, and I'm sure the same uh, in yours, that the people of our state have created, have invested in, uh, and, uh, and, and have supported uh, for the entire history of our state. Uh, those of you who know me are sick of hearing me say this, but the first public university in Ohio actually predates Ohio's admission to the Union, Ohio University, um, uh, which was chartered by an act of Congress out of the Northwest Territory, uh, created out of the Northwest Territory prior to uh, the state's admission to the Union. Uh, in 1803, followed just shortly thereafter by Miami University, created by an act of Congress, uh, also uh, in Ohio's uh, virgin territory. And so uh, these are institutions that we have built, that we have nurtured. And so today, the fact that we have 14 public universities and 23 community colleges on 24 regional, with 24 regional campuses and multiple community college campuses with over 500,000 students, uh, you know, attending four credit uh, courses um, at um, uh, at any particular time. Uh, this is a um, uh, this is something that uh, that we take uh, that we take very very seriously. And so uh, you know, I was I was thinking about the word crisis this morning, and uh, and I don't I, I I don't embrace the word crisis um, uh, for the situation that we're in uh, in in Ohio. But I do feel a an, an, a strong sense of urgency uh, that we have got to. Um, uh, that we have got to make change uh, in, uh, in our system. And, and I was thinking about the reasons for that urgency. Uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's precipitated by, this, uh, you know, by the, the challenges that we face today, but not just the financial challenge. Uh, the financial challenge is, in fact, not even, in my mind, uh, the greatest one, because even though we're in the last 10 days of a, of a budget uh, debate that will end up certainly uh, with some cuts, it has to, uh, given the declining uh, state revenues, uh, across the state. Um, the, the urgency, I feel, is not, uh, you know, how do we keep these institutions going with the money we have? The urgency, I feel, is how do we do for the people of the state of Ohio what they need us to do at this moment? I mean, after all, they built us, they invested in us, the bonds, the appropriations uh, must total tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars. And if you believe that they did it for a reason, then that reason has to be that they believe that a vibrant system of public higher education is essential to the prosperity and livelihood uh, of a state, then it seems to me that we have a special, unique obligation at this moment in time to make sure we are rising to the challenge. And that challenge is not just the challenge of the recession, but as you certainly know by following the Midwest, the challenge is the entire transition uh, of the economy of the industrial Midwest uh, uh, of this nation uh, into a productive force uh, and a competitive force uh, in, um, uh, in the uh, uh, global uh, economy. So um, I view that as the, uh, as the urgency and as the challenge. Um, and frankly, um, it's why there are moments when I really just want to grab uh, you know, our uh, leaders uh, in higher education by the lapel and say, don't, we, don't you see what's going on around here? Um, and that is that, uh, that whether you believe it is our mission, our responsibility to the people of the state of Ohio, or whether you just believe it's pure self-interest, the fact is uh, that the ability of the future generations of this state to sustain the institutions that we've created um, and uh, built in the same manner um, is, um, uh, is, is, very much, uh, is very much at risk. Um, and so we have to think about, about, what, we've, uh, uh, about what we've been doing. Um, I have, uh, uh, I in, in, you know, we have a, a strategic plan. Most of you uh, know this. Um, uh, if you haven't seen it, I've got a copy here, but it's available on our website at www.uso, which stands for University System of Ohio.edu. The, the single unifying fact of this um, is, uh, was, uh, is, is, the, is the understanding, the realization that we had been operating independently. Um, you know, we were not a system in any sense of the word, um, that we were these 14 universities, 23 community colleges, each 
operating independently, trying to survive independently, asking ourselves what was best for our individual institutions, and not asking ourselves what was best for the state of Ohio. And so for the first time, uh, through our strategic plan, we have created goals for the state of Ohio, um, and uh, that all of us are going to, uh, 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 that all of us are committed to meeting, um, and then the strategies and the, and the performance metrics and all those things that we have, uh, that, we, that you build up into a plan uh, is to say, how do we collectively, how do we collectively meet the needs of this state uh, at, uh, uh, at this uh, challenging time? And there are a lot of, uh, of things that we believe we have to do, but let me just mention uh, two of them and, uh, and, uh, and very briefly uh, how we think about them. The first, of course, is affordability. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's been, uh, been alluded to here today, and we certainly had a good, lively conversation uh, about, it, uh, 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 about it at lunch. Um, and uh, and for, for us, um, affordability uh, comes into also a couple of big buckets. One is the efficiency agenda. I mean, let's face it. Uh, we can become more efficient, um, and the pressures of economic crises are a perfect time uh, to become more efficient. Technology, which we all are discussing here today, uh, is, it, is, it doesn't just change the, uh, uh, the economics uh, of a newsroom. Uh, it can change the way, we, uh, the way we operate for the better. It can make us more customer-oriented. It can make us more uh, uh, higher quality uh, educational materials. It can make it easier for us to track the performance of students uh, in uh, uh, in, uh, in their education. Uh, and so we have, a, uh, you know, we have a vision of the use of technology that makes us both administratively efficient, more administratively efficient, and higher quality. And by the way, I would suggest that we can do that with off-the-shelf technologies right now. I mean, for example, one of the things that we're trying to build is a student, uh, is, is a customer service system for students so they can always see not only where they are in their progress through higher education, but what all their options are that spring off from that point. So if you've already taken the following three courses, uh, President Padron at, at a community college, um, where does that lead you in the, you know, where are all your choices from here? To what majors, um, to, at what institutions, at what, what combinations of prices, um, uh, where, what jobs do those, thing, do those uh, uh, degrees tend to lead you to? Uh, who's working in those jobs? How much are they making? By the way, would you like to actually talk to one of the students who went through that program? Here's an email address. This is all technology that's available. This is all you know, existing social networking technology, consumer preference technology, all of which we, can, uh, we believe we must and can apply to our system. The other is, um, the other was uh, Dr. Lin, I don't know if she's still here, but Dr. Lin's presentation this morning about market segmentation. And we talked, uh, we talked about this in, um, uh, uh, in our lunch, and we had a, just the beginnings of what I think is a very uh, interesting conversation that perhaps we can have here today, uh, which is to say that we talk about higher education um, as if it is one monolithic product, when we all know in this room it clearly is not, um, and giving students choices among those, even within a public system, um, is, uh, we think, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the only way we can uh, meet the needs of, of the people of our state. So the example I gave at lunch, which I apologize to, to my colleagues at lunch, but I'll give again, um, is that, um, that in the shadows of Ohio State University, uh, which of course is one of the largest, if not the largest public university, as opposed to the uh, community college um, in, uh, um, in the nation, uh, but is also like most uh, state flagship institutions, becoming more selective, uh, harder to get into, um, and, uh, uh, and all of those things. Um, we have, uh, uh, we have a Columbus State University, which is now the largest community college in the state of Ohio. It pales in comparison to Miami-Dade. I'm embarrassed to say the number. But it's our largest uh, community college in Ohio. You can go to Columbus State University, uh, and on that campus, go straight through to get an Ohio University, which is another one of, that's our, remember, our oldest public university, Ohio University, teaches certain degree programs on that campus now. And so you can get effectively a three plus one degree for a grand total of $15,000. You walk out with a bachelor's degree from Ohio University on that campus in Columbus in the shadows of Ohio State University. And people said to me, Ohio State will never let you do that. But the truth is, Ohio State doesn't care. 
because we're not competing uh, with, uh, with their market share. And more to the point, Ohio State actually can begin to see an advantage to them. Why? Because as long as there's an affordable public option uh, for, uh, uh, for students in, in, in central Ohio, which is one of the fast growing parts of the state of Ohio, practically the only fast growing, the only growing, <laughs> we feel it feels fast growing because it's the only growing part of the state of Ohio right now. Um, uh, as long as that option is there, it frees Ohio State to be what Ohio State um, is, uh, is becoming. It's, it, it is not as, uh, uh, as necessary for Ohio State to prove that they're the lowest cost option. Another way to look at this is if our, if our university main campuses, which are incredibly important to the attraction and retention of talent for our state, uh, uh, if you, but they are by, by any stretch of the imagination, they're going to be the most expensive uh, uh, part of your system. They have to be. On any campus when you can get, you know, major in 150 things and minor in 130 things um, and, and, you know, and play sports and do all the other things that you do on a campus, that's going to be the most expensive thing. Should I spend my time trying to make that cheaper? Well, it should be more efficient. It should be a better experience. Or should I spend my time making sure that our, across our system there are all those alternatives for the adults that need it, you know, that, that have jobs and, and, and families and can't travel, for the young people who say, you know what, I don't need to spend four years on a campus. I'd just as soon have two years and then transfer, save money, live at home, be closer to my girlfriend, make sure she doesn't go out with somebody else. All those kinds of things um, are, uh, are the uh, options. The, um, uh, the last, uh, the second, and then my time's up, I know, um, the second uh, 12 minutes is, is a struggle. I just try to talk faster. I don't know how you'll do it, <laughs> President Padron. But, uh, the, the second is this economic uh, uh, wellness, economic uh, prosperity, uh, prosperity message. Um, and, and we've addressed that uh, by, you know, the, the traditional way of thinking about this in higher education um, is that, you know, our job is to educate people. It's somebody else's job to get them a job. Right? It's the Department of Development, or it's the mayor's job, or it's the county commissioner's job, or somebody else, right? So we sit around, we say, well, we graduated them. They left Ohio. You know, it's not our, you know, what can we do about it? It's hot cities. It's this, it's that. It's the trade, the balance of trade. It's, you know, I don't know what it is. The exchange rate of the dollar. We've, what we understand clearly is the state cannot prosper unless we have the, the creative and educated talent in our state. We are the engines of that, by and large. Sure, there are other forces that affect it, um, but we can't sit around and point fingers at somebody else. We have to, uh, we have to own it ourselves. And so we have our, the top line goals of our strategic plan are three. They are graduating more students. They are attracting, uh, I'm sorry, they are keeping them in Ohio. And they, are tr and they are thirdly attracting talent to the state. And we have measurable goals for all three of those things. And when we first introduced those and said, we're going to own these uh, metrics, and we're going to uh, report them and account for them, you know exactly what happened. On the first one, uh, people like our president said, OK, we get it, right? You want us to graduate more? You give us more money, you know, whatever they said. Uh, we'll, you know, but they even understood they were going to have to be more efficient. Um, uh, you know, we, we'll graduate more. If a factory makes widgets and you tell them to graduate more widgets, you know, tell them to create more widgets, they know how to do that. But when we started saying, and you've got to keep them here, work to keep them here, um, and be an attraction, that's when they started getting really uh, funky about it. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, our answer was, uh, our answer was, we know how to do this. If we think about it, we know how to do this. I mean, we know that if we work with internships and co-op programs and give and make sure that our students have job offers and experiences with good employers, that they will be more likely uh, to stay. It's, you know, it's not only intuitive, but research you know, has demonstrated. We know that if the, if the attractiveness of our communities, if students graduate and they're working on a research project with a professor, they're more likely to want to stay in the community if it's a good community. If there's entrepreneurial businesses starting up, if there's a, if there's a climate for that, we can do that. We can affect that. And of course, we also know that, that excellence attracts. And so rather than trying to be everything to everybody, if we focus on certain areas of excellence that we can be the best at um, in the nation or in the world, that people will come uh, to us to study, to teach, uh, to work, and to, start, uh, and to start businesses. So by being held accountable for the economic development, uh, the economic prosperity agenda, uh, uh, we think we are, in fact, uh, have a shot at, at, at being transformative for our state uh, and also living up to the... Um, to the demands. You know, when I first became, uh, I'm, I'm moving to sit down now, Chuck. When, um, <laughs> when, uh, when, I, when I first became chancellor, one of the things I did was, you know, I was meeting with the legislative leaders, um, and one said, you know, I hear all the time 
uh, that we are the drivers of the economic prosperity of the state. But then when I ask the follow-up question, tell me how, you know, we start, well, we had that startup company, we spun off, you know, we had that patent, we had the this or the that. We are determined to have a comprehensive, systematic answer to the question uh, of how we are the drivers of economic prosperity of the state. And that means doing a better job at the things that, in fact, do drive the economic prosperity of the state. Thanks. <laughs>